basically, in, in layperson's terms, we got a lot of clay here. We can actually percolate surface runoff down through the soil. So standing over here be, beside our good American friend Max is a rainwater cistern. So somebody help me out. Is this 2,000 liters here? Okay, 10 cubic meters. What does that translate into liters? 10,000 liters. So it's catching 100% of the rainwater on the roof and we're using it to flush toilets inside the house and for irrigation. How, do, how does this rainwater cistern actually help you guys at the town in terms of your infrastructure? Well, it helps us with uh, water draw to the house. Uh, the reduction in terms of the draw to water your lawn, to use water inside the house as well. There's a water connection to the house, but yeah, this will limit the, the draw and also, also limit the sewage effort that comes out into our sanitary sewer. And it, it's well, also as handling as well. the runoff as well, okay. too, right? And in terms of, of uh, peak draws from the system, typically, when do your peaks occur? Well, typically, there's certain times of the day, early in the morning, late in the afternoon, lunch time. What time of the, the year? Happen. In the summer, right? The year. right? So yeah. if you've got, if you've got um, a whole lot water available from rain in the spring or, or other parts of the year, you can shed some of that peak. So essentially, uh, this kind of approach holds promise to eliminate those water shortages we start to hear about when we get into July weather. So this, this uh, subdivision doesn't need any uh, one lawn sprinkler police, right? So, um, It'll create another problem. What's that? When these lawns are all green and everywhere else is brown, people are going to say, why? Why? Yeah, get those guys over there. So the, the other... The other interesting thing about this, and I can only speak to a Toronto statistic, but again, everything does come down to energy. We're actually pumping around this water using pumping stations that use electricity. So if we're catching the water here and using it here, we're saving huge amounts of electricity for the municipality. Laundry? Uh, we can't actually hook up to that yet. The plumbing code won't let us do that. We've got to treat the water before we do it. The, ni the nice thing about all renewable energy and all um, solutions like this environmentally are that the supply of the energy, the supply of the water, is where you need it. Right. We don't have to go over Hell and Dale to get uh, through the big pipe to get to Lake Ontario to supply this house. Part of what we're doing is eliminating the need for mega projects like that. So. In, in, a, in a neat kind of way, it, it falls into the notion of small is beautiful and, you know, doing things locally versus going further and further afield. So that's part of the message as well. Well, let me just add, I don't know what the numbers are here in New, Newmarket, but in the city of Toronto, electricity use for water pumping and sewage treatment is the single largest use of electricity for the city of Toronto, more than the subway, more than street lights, more than public housing, more than the city hall. It is the number one thing. Sometimes the water gets pumped, I understand, three times before it gets used on right. the top of a, an apartment building in downtown Toronto or an office. So this has got I electrical savings, major like electrical savings here as well. Peter, 62% yeah. of the bill. It's very good. And the other thing that, that, that happens in, in the city is with hard landscapes, a lot of the water that comes as rainfall runs off and is carried away in the storm drainage system and you've got problems that are associated with that. By capturing it for use, watering lawns over time, you're allowing that water to percolate into the soil over time, which of course is a benefit as well. Great. So one of the other things I'll point out, if you, if you actually look over at these houses being framed, um, so you can see the outboard insulation on the outside. There's actually more foam on the outside of the wall. Um, but the other really interesting thing is that all the wood that's being used for framing there is FSC certified. So it's all coming from a managed wood lot. Typically when we get lumber for construction, it's coming from clear cutting. Okay, so let's go into that warm, cozy basement. So it looks a little bit different down here than people's normal mechanical rooms. There's actually lots of boxes and each box does uh, a very special thing. Okay, so you'll, you'll notice it's very toasty down here. So this floor is actually heating your body. And the temperature of that floor right now, it's because I got my little gadget here, is 84 degrees, okay? So if we were gonna finish this basement, it's very well insulated, so it's got a 
multiple layers of insulation down here. So probably almost three times as much as the building code requirement. But this little box here is circulating hot water through the floor. And this is a dual purpose hot water heater that's actually giving us the radiant floor. And we have radiant floors in different areas of the house. So we go into the room over the garage, you're gonna feel that warm floor is being very warm. This is sort of the next level of, uh, I'd refer to this as an integrated mechanical system. We don't have a separate hot water tank or a furnace. We have one heating plant that's actually doing a bunch of different jobs. And the really important thing to note here is that anybody that has an existing house and is about to change their furnace, this is the technology that you could put in. Just doesn't have to go in this house, it can go into an existing house. So for space heating, we're actually using this fan coil. There's a little bit of water leaking underneath it, which isn't good, okay. So right inside here, we actually have a heat recovery ventilator system. And the way that I, I like to uh, actually describe this is it's just like our body. This is actually the heart and it's pumping air or your body would pump blood to all your different organs. So this is pumping air to every single room in the house. But like your lungs, we're actually oxygenating the blood. And this heat recovery ventilator actually uses waste heat from bathrooms that's being exhausted. We're getting rid of the odors and the humidity to preheat fresh air that's coming in on a continuous basis. So although this house is very airtight, the air quality in here is second to none, okay? And on the bottom here, we actually have a fan motor that's gonna save this homeowner between three to $400 a year in electricity. So it's a DC motor, like little batteries, on magnets that uses 80% less electricity. So some of the things that you'll notice is we've got one box instead of two. So a lot of the newer homes come with a conventional furnace with uh, a ventilation device added to it. So they've integrated both devices into the one box, which means one fan versus multiple fans, one pump versus multiple uh, bits and pieces of controls. And that's part of the energy saving that you, you, you get when you go to the next level. The other thing in terms of this, this device here on the wall, one of the ways you can recognize how efficient it is, that's the chimney, folks. Plastic. It's plastic. So it must be pretty efficient if the byproducts of combustion have so much heat taken out of them, they go into plastic pipes. That's the wall. So that's, that's one of the ways you can tell. Also, it brings air in from outside and takes it back out to outside. It's what we call a sealed combustion unit. So all of this stuff contributes to a much more comfortable and a much safer and a much more efficient home. Okay, and so Paul's got one of those in his house and I've got one of those in my house. They've been around for a long time and they work, okay? So if you're gonna change your furnace, ask the guy about a dual purpose water heater or boiler. And this is actually a holding tank for the solar thermal water collectors on the roof. These, uh, this line set here connects the tank to the roof and it's actually running a glycol solution up to the two panels to provide about 60% of the hot water heating to the house. And the really interesting thing to get here, folks, is that once people buy this, they get their energy for free. They're not hooked up to a gas line, they're not hooked up to electrical, they're getting their heat from the sun.